Yeah. 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 Probably, you know. Yep. Do you do you have a preference? It doesn't matter. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna go make a copy of this so we can look at it together. Sure. You got on water and food and all that? I'm not going on water, right? I'm good. You good. Well? I'm fine right now, thank you. Though. Right.
4 a.m. That's when my alarm goes off for work, and I'm just to get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About 4.15, that's when I get back, slide right into bed next to her, and start having a conversation with her about having the house, putting the house up for sale and talking about it. Sep like actually going proceeding with the separation. Okay. And obviously it gets pretty emotional. Like we're talking about, you know, like we felt this the disconnection was there, like falling out of love, and trying to stay together. Maybe just for the kids' sake, but we're realizing that doing like our homework, it's not most of the time that's not going to work. Yeah. And it gets pretty emotional because we have two beautiful kids and we have one on the way. So it's just a matter of like. It was very emotional. We were both crying, and at the end, we just said, you know, she said she was going to take the kids to her friend's house for the day. She would be back. Okay. And I was like, okay, it's fine. And so I went downstairs, made my protein shake. You know, the 5 a.m. That's when I did that. Okay. Packed my lunchbox, had my oatmeal, chicken, filled my water jug up. 5:15, I went outside, backed my truck up, and loaded up. I have my book bag, my lunchbox, computer, water jug, my big big clear container. I put big clear containers in my truck so it's easy just to pull out, pull in, just depending on what I'm going to use. My O-ring kit, and I knew I was going to do some stuffing box rubbers that day, so I got some various open wrenches from my toolbox, and I know those would work better than the ones they would give me. Okay. Um, 5.30, that's when I went to work. Okay. And I had heard from Shanann for for about two hours there, so the 7.40 I texted her and asked her if she could tell me where the kids were if she took them anywhere. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Let's see. At 12, I texted her again, called me. Nothing. And then about 12, 10 p.m., that's when my doorbell visitor, it read another visitor, and I was like, hey, it popped up on my phone and it says it was Nicole. And I tried to put it on my phone to see if, she, if like, she's just trying to get in or whatnot. And I hear her like she's on the phone trying to, I could t I could hear her on, through my phone saying she's trying to get this Shanann, so that's when I called her. Yeah, I called her at 1220, see what was going on. She told me that Shanann hadn't responded to any of her calls all day, or any of her friends' calls all day. Okay. And that's, that's kind of, that's very strange, just mm -hmm. because, I mean, if she doesn't get back to me, that, that's fine. You know, like, yeah. she gets busy with kids, whatever. Yeah. So if she's going to get back to her people, like, the people, like, she works with direct, direct sales. Okay. So if she's going to get back with them, that's strange. Is she the type to answer the phone? For them, yeah, okay. like all the time. Okay. Yeah. It, for me, it's just like, hey, wait, <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. Um, so about 12.40, uh, a few more efforts from the cold reacher while she's there, like outside the house. Mm -hmm. And at 1 o'clock, that's when I left, and I was like, all right, I'm on my way down there. Uh, 2 o'clock when I got home, because uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't get in because the front door had a top latch to keep the kids in. Okay. Uh, Nicole and the police officer that was there. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so they couldn't get in because the top latch of the car, I mean, top latch on the front door was hinged, and the keypad on the outside did not work to get in the garage. So they had to wait till I got there so I could get the remote open. Okay. So that's when I got home. I opened the garage door and we went inside the house and looked everywhere. Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, nowhere to be found. She has wedding rings on her nightstand, her phone's still on the couch, her purse is still there, the medicine for the kids is still there, the car and the car seat is still there, and there's no sign of them anywhere. Okay. Uh, three o'clock, um, the police officer, detective, uh, Bob, Bob Howard, right? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Bob Howard. Uh, Bob Butcher's name every <laughs> time. Um, I'm asking Nicole and I, you know, questions about where she could have gone okay. or who she could be with. Um, at about 4 o'clock, the police officer that was there, he was checking the neighbor's security footage. Um, at 5 p.m., uh, the same same police officer, detective, and then sergeant, another officer, they showed up and they searched the house again. Um, about 6 o'clock, they didn't call around to anyone that I could, that, that may know something, called hospitals and hotels. Uh, 7.30, my friend Nick and men showed up to show support. And, and then on it's his friends is showing up. Uh, okay. It shows Lauren, Dave, Jeremy. And 10 o'clock is pretty much about laid down, but I didn't go to bed until probably like 2 a.m. just because I was the texts and calls all night. Okay. And I was just hoping that, I'm going to let all the lights on in the house, I was hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, nothing back. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? 
At first, I really thought maybe she was just at my house, just yeah. decompressing. Well, I'm saying, yeah. But after today, like with the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, it's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew. Because there's uh, there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm -hmm. But like that's the way I'm leaning now. At first, I thought for real she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm -hmm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out. Because I have no idea where where they are. If you could think of anything that we could do to find them, what would it be? I mean, everything that I've exhausted so far is like people that have car seats, because she left the car seats. And she would never just, I mean, I mean Bella could sit in a, in a regular booster chair, that because she's about that time. Mm -hmm. Celeste isn't, isn't quite there yet, but all the people that I know that have cars, I mean, they've contacted me. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's, I mean, there's there's definitely a chance there's somebody I don't know. Uh, being a guy or a girl, I don't I mean, and she has plenty of friends through, like, direct sales that I, I've never met. That could have a kid, could have a kid that she, they, they come and just say, hey, you know, let's go. Like, just back up in the back, put them in, let's go. But. I wouldn't have a name, I wouldn't know who they are. Okay. And this is like, that's what's driving me nuts. It's like, when I tell the news crew, like, if she's out there, it's like, just come home. Like, who would, if, if someone has her, or like, not just has her, but she's at somebody's house and she's just decompressing, it's, it's time to come back. Mm -hmm. But now it, this is real. Okay. This has gone to a different level. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have an inkling of if it's good or bad? Yesterday, I, I would have thought that she was safe and she was, it was good that she would been that she would come home. Mm -hmm. Today, it's more on the other side. It's, I don't think that she would let it get this far if she was just decompressing somewhere. I mean, she's not talking to anybody. As far as I mean, any, any people that have reached out to me that I haven't talked to in like a year mm -hmm. that are friends with her. Mm -hmm. Like one of her like best friends, Mark Judy, lives in Florida. She works in the police department down in Miami, mm -hmm. and she called me today. Like that's one of her friends she would confide in. Oh, okay. So and and she hasn't heard nothing, anything. Nothing. And nobody's heard anything. Mm -hmm. okay. Her parents. I mean, she doesn't like talking to her mom, but still, she would. Her mom calls her enough that she would at least answer once. Yeah. And if she's, I mean, I'm married. I know how it is. If she's hacked off at her husband, would she call her mom? She would call one of the friends that uh, contacted me. Okay. Uh, at least one of them because she has she has a close knit group. Okay. But the fact that none of them know anything is very strange because one of them would have said something by now. Seeing what this is escalated to, is it possible that her close knit group isn't close with you and there is somebody who knows where she is right now? I don't think so because I mean Nicole is a very she's very close with Nicole and. The way Nicole is acting right now, as far as how emotional she is, yet there's no way like she knows. What does that mean? There's no way like she would know like where she is if she knew. Oh, so you're saying if Nicole knew? Yeah, Nicole knew like the way she's acting right now. She's she's as freaked out as I am. Okay. So there's no way like she would know where she is if she knew. Do you know? Do you know Nicole that well? I'm decent. She's been over at my our house a good amount of time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, and you've obviously spoken with Nicole. Oh yeah. And you don't have any weird feelings from her. No, she was she was there at the at the house. Okay. Like she was she was the one that was ringing the doorbell trying to see what was going on. Okay. Um, do you have a sense that the police here, or the FBI here, do you have a sense that we have a good enough list of people to call and check with? So I, don't, I think so because I've I've gone through my entire phone. I know Nicole's gone through her entire phone. Amanda, anybody that lives here that knows Shannon. Mm -hmm. They pretty much have the same contact list. Okay. So if there's somebody that's not on that on my phone, it's on theirs. Okay. Has somebody uh, 
I think the police have Nicole's phone, or I'm sorry, your wife's phone, right? Yes. And I don't want to pronounce her name wrong, Shanann? Shanann. Shanann? Okay. So the police have Shanann's phone? Yeah. Do they have your phones? Have they looked at your phones? I don't think so. Okay. Can I run that out and have them look real quick? Yeah. Okay. Is there any password I'm going to run into? That's uh, 3307. 3307? 3387. 3387. Are there any other phones we can check? Mm-hmm. Okay. When they look at this, what's the best thing that they can do to, I don't know, to say, um, look for these contacts, look for this uh, Instagram, look for this Snapchat. You know? So like the only thing on here that I would say it's going to be weird because our contact list is the same. Oh, you guys have a shared contact yeah, like, like every Google? Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's like, I've, like all the, uh, what drove me nuts is that when she like downloaded to the cloud, it multiplied or duplicated, duplicated, duplicated. Oh, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah, so this is the same person over and over. Ten again. people over. Oh, okay. So we have the same contact. Okay. Yes. So I'm gonna run this out. Okay. Um, so three three oh three three eight seven three three eight seven, and I really want them to just not physically rip this phone apart, but really dive in. Okay. okay. And is that, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll just I'm gonna hand this off to somebody. Okay. All right. I'll be right back. Does she have another phone that you know? 
That's the only phone I've ever seen him use. Okay, what's your phone number? 910-850-3286. Okay. Um, so, you know, strap on your CSI hat. Uh, you can imagine the FBI has some pretty cool tricks and toys and everything. Is there anything you can think of that we should be giving them or not? Honestly, everything that I saw today was like, it was it threw me on a whirlwind. I didn't think all that was going to happen. So that everything that happened today, I thought you guys were like spot on. Okay. Um, is there anything that a friend has said? Oh, has the FBI done this? Has a well, you probably didn't know the FBI was involved until uh, an hour ago. Yeah. Um, is there any good ideas that your friends have had saying, man, they're going to try this, they're going to do this? A lot of people have asked about Amber Alerts, but I'm not sure like why that. I'm not sure like I'm sure you know Amber Alerts have to deal with like all right if you know someone has taken a kid, but since right. the last person you saw was the mom, yeah. and you don't think he, everybody's gone. Yeah. That's probably why Amber Alerts not really yeah. used in this respect. Well, they did a, they did a press statement, so um, Amber Alerts are a little bit different. Um, one thing that helps Amber Amber Alerts is cars. You know, when you're driving down the freeway and you say, a missing person, look for this car. What car do we look for? And that's the only car she has is the one that left in the garage. The Lexus? Mm -hmm. And that's what you drove here tonight? Yep. Okay. Do you have any other cars that you drive? I just my work truck. Okay. Um, Lexus. Does the, le oh, the Lexus is here. Okay. How could she have left the house? Um, on only way she could have left the house. Somebody picked her up, but it would have to have been from the back. There's the camera in the front where the neighbor, the way it faces the driveway, it would have picked that up. Only thing it picked up was me leaving at like 5.26. Okay. How do you know? Is it your camera? It's neighbor's camera. Oh, did he tell you? Yeah, okay. we, were, we were all over there watching it with okay. the officer. Okay. All right. It just showed me loading up my truck. Oh. Um, is it on all the time? His camera's on all the time, yep. Okay. And all it saw was you leaving. Yep. That didn't one. show her coming home. I didn't show her walking in. No. Okay. But she she was in the house when yeah, I left. Yeah, obviously. So I, I'm, I was just like a. I'm just trying to think. So the camera, is it possible that it doesn't catch everything? Like the motion detector. It from what I saw, I think like he showed me other like examples, but it was picking up like minuscule things uh -oh. here and there. Like it was like it didn't take much to like just get it started recording. Oh, so it probably is a motion detector then. It's yeah. just start points. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So then there's his camera and your security system. And my doorbell camera right and there. Your doorbell camera. And the only thing that was strange about mine that morning was that when I left, it said garage door two remained open. When you left? Were you parked in the garage when you left? I uh, pulled out and I hit. And it said, I thought it shut. Oh, okay. And it said main garage door two open. While when I went back and looked at all the history. And Nick Nicole said that it was shut when she got there. Okay. But it said it was because on my on my notifications, it'll say something's left open, but it won't say when it's shut. Oh, so you got a notification was open mm -hmm. after having after when you thought you shut it. Yep. Okay. All right. Next, I looked back and I saw it shutting. Okay. Um, kids, do they have any security little watches? Mm -hmm. You know, something they have the call home button. Nothing like that? Nothing like that, yeah. No iPads? Mm -hmm. How old were they? Four and three. Oh, they're pretty young. Okay. Anything else you can think of? Honestly, uh, so like, we've exhausted, like, every option, every friend that we know okay. that could have, like, that could have helped her. Okay. Um, so we talked about her decompressing a few times. Where would you do that? She would have to go to her friend's house to do that. She wouldn't just go anywhere, not with the kids. No, no, no. I've checked. If she had, if she had any cash on her, I'm not sure like how much she would have had on her. She doesn't usually doesn't carry much cash, and the cash she had in her wallet was from Nicole the previous day. From who? From Nicole. Oh, okay. She told me that was the cash she gave her when I saw when she found her purse. For what? No, that was. I'm not sure. She didn't tell me. Okay. But um, that was the only cash she had in her wallet. And is that still at the house? You said. Yeah. Okay. So is her license in the wallet? Yeah. So she got no cash. That we know of. No license, no phone. Um, anything about the clothes in the closet, the hamper, the drawers that makes you think she packs some boots, she's going to the mountains. Like she has so many clothes in that in that closet, like it's it'd be hard to really tell if she took a little amount. 
I mean, if you took a big amount, it'd be pretty obvious, but like a low amount, it would never be. Okay. All right, so you have like, say like that whole wall, and then the bottom, and the other side. Okay. If you take this room, it's about the size of it. A woman with a lot of clothing? You know what I'm saying? No. Okay. Shoes, anything about the shoes that you think? She has a whole shoe closet. <laughs> so there's nothing obvious that screams at you. She's no. preparing for this type of activity. Okay. Um, and the girls, the kids' clothes too. It's, there was a, enough that was there that I saw missing. Okay. So, um, all right. So I know it's hard to talk about. Um, you mentioned that there was a hard conversation that the two of you had about uh, separation, your marriage and separation. Now that you've had a little bit of time to think. Looking back on that conversation, um, can you connect the dots between both of you being upset and crying, and here we are, and now she and the kids are gone? What do you, what do you think about? I think about, like, did I cause this? Like, did I make her feel like she needed to leave? And, like, did she really feel, like, the things she was saying, did she really feel the same? Did she really feel like, all right, the disconnection? Did she really feel all that, or she was just saying it? Like, maybe like us falling out of love, did that, was that really registering her at that point in time, or did it register after I left to go to work? And then she's just like, you know, I'm just going to leave. Okay. It's like, I'm not sure, because she laid back down. Okay. She was still there when I left. Okay. But like, maybe she sat there and, and thought about it, like, do I really need to stay here right now? Okay. Like, if he doesn't love me, maybe I should just go. Can you really get into that conversation with me. And what I want to know is, um, you obviously have a very deep relationship with her, she's your wife, but it's going to be easy for me to listen to what it was said and maybe think that there are some clues about, maybe she did just lay down and, and cry a little bit longer and something happened to her, or maybe she did get frustrated and she left. So let's, can we recreate that conversation? Mm -hmm. So tell me what happened. So I crawled back in bed. So sorry, let's start from, mm -hmm. Um, she gets home late at night. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll start from that point. Okay, so she got home about 2 a.m. And were you already home? Oh, yeah, I was, I was passed out. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I, could, I felt her get into bed. That was about it. But about 4 a.m., that's when my alarm <coughs> That's when my alarm went off to go to work. Okay. So that's when I got ready and everything. And so from, she gets in at 2, alarm was off at 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you were sleeping that whole time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the conversation hadn't started? No. Okay. Well, so about when my alarm goes off, that's when, after I get ready for work, I call back in bed and have that conversation. So you wake up at 4, mm -hmm. from f at 4, then what, until you start the conversation? I uh, get dressed, get my get my clothes on, brush my teeth, deodorant, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Shower? No. Okay. Shower up. Yeah, back at 4. Okay, what do you do for a living? I work in the oil and gas. Okay. So then it doesn't matter if you go to work without a shower? <laughs> okay. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> all right. It's going to be bad anyways. Yeah. So then you wake up, you get ready. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You're fine. Um, so, then, so then what time are we talking about when you're ready to talk with her? About 4.15 or so. Okay. And so she was asleep from the time she got in from 2 to 4, mm -hmm. or 4.15. You wake up at 4, 4.15, you're ready. Okay, and at 4.15, you start talking. Mm -hmm. Why do you talk at 4.15 in the morning? I felt like I needed to talk to her face to face. Cause okay. like I wanted to say something. Um, I, I, like when she was in Arizona, like I didn't want to do it through a text. I didn't want to do it through a call. I was like, I got back in bed. I was like, I needed to, I needed to talk to her about this because she had told me, she had told me like when she was when she was gonna fly back that she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower. She wanted to get there for me. What do you mean when she got back? When she flew back in from Phoenix? Yeah. Okay. So she told you, let's have a talk. No, she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower at the airport off her because she was oh, her, flight, her flight was delayed. Oh, okay. Her flight was supposed, to, was supposed to get in 11, but it didn't okay. get to 11. Okay. And so did she call you or did she text you? I think there was a call okay. on that one. All right. And so at 4.15, what happens? That's when I crawled back in bed and I kind of woke her up. Okay. And then I proceeded to talk to her about how I was feeling, about how I felt like what's been going on with us for the last, what, what she's seen in like the last six weeks because we were, she was in North Carolina and I was down there just the last week. But from what 
just being a part and just like figuring out who people are. It's mm -hmm. like the best, honestly, like the best way for people to really find out who they are is to spend time apart. I agree. And it's kind of just like you need to see yourself. And then on the last week, that's when I went back to North Carolina, and I was there for the last week there. Okay. And when we were together, we could feel like it was it wasn't there. That spark, mm -hmm. and that's kind of cliche, but that spark sure. wasn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. And on that night, I told I woke that morning, early that morning, mm -hmm. I told her like the disconnection is it's there, like it's not going away. Like the connection we had when in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's not there anymore. It's okay. like. I don't feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. And it's just like, I don't feel like, I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Like, bringing another. That's what you told him? Yes. Okay. Like, having another baby and bringing us in this relationship, do you think this is going to work mm -hmm. with us being together? Or separation, I think, is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when, like, all the crying and everything proceeded. And, it was just, it was very hard just, just to talk talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed, like, I needed to see her face, like, while I did it. I couldn't uh, text, phone, whatever. I needed to be face to face and be able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh. What did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. And she said that most of the time when you have kids and you have a relationship where people, like, they don't, they don't love each other anymore, they fall out of love, this connection, that having kids even bringing a new baby into the into the equation doesn't always work as well as keeping, like, you know, the couple happy and the kids happy. It's like, it almost is, like, better if... Right, two are mm -hmm. on a different, different sides. Yeah, and you don't want to spend your whole marriage disliking each other and faking it for the kids. Yes, no, that's that's one thing. Okay. And is that accurate? I don't well, know. Yeah, that, that's, that's that's totally accurate. Okay. I mean, you, you don't want to be a, you don't want to be the people parading around with like a mask on when the kids are around, and then when the kids go to sleep, you just go your separate ways. Okay. It's like that's what I don't want. Okay. And that's why that's why we talk that's why we're talking about that separation that night. Okay. And that's why. That's why I got so emotional right there. Okay. Emotional for you too? Oh yeah, I was bawling my eyes out. Okay. Um, so then as a result, so then how long did that conversation last? It lasted so about 4.15 when we started. Did we talk about the house as well? Okay. What did you say about the house? Like we needed to sell the house. Like there's no way like we can stay in this house and have another kid mm -hmm. and be able to just keep everything afloat mm -hmm. and she's like well where do you want to move to and I was like well we can move to Brighton we can move uh, are you familiar with the area kind of yeah okay so we can move to Brighton we can move to my mom we can move like you know wherever mm -hmm. somewhere that's cheaper okay and she was like well because she had already contacted the uh realtor the week before through an email oh to, to see like what she thought and that's when, like, I, I actually contacted Ann that day. Like, a little, like, pretty much probably about 8 o'clock that day. Who's Ann? The realtor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And asked her, you know, like, if we can get the ball rolling. Like, see what she thought. So you said your wife called a week before to the realtor? Emailed her. Okay. So then this conversation early in the morning wasn't a shock to either of you or no. a surprise. It was the next step. Yeah. And the long conversation you have mm -hmm. to have leading yeah. up to. Okay. Yeah, it was, this was not like a... It's like way up like a big bang theory yeah. type thing. It was just yeah. like this was okay. It was it, that's why it was just an emotional conversation, sure. like because it wasn't just like a like come out of nowhere left field type of thing. Like we knew like something wasn't. We knew about what we want to do with the house. We knew like what what's going on with it. Like we knew something was. Okay. Is it accurate to say that then the time when you were away from each other when she was in North Carolina, the time when she was in Arizona? Maybe the two of you knew that that could have been time you were talking, and so when you finally get together, it's we can't wait another second. We're going to talk. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. And tell me if it's wrong. No, no, you're, you're right. Okay. So then uh, the conversation starts at 4:15. You talk about 
each other in your marriage. You talk about the house and mm-hmm. And that's when the conversation ends and we're talking that's when she says she's gonna take her friends or take her and her friends to a take her and the kids to her friend's house. Who's who is which friend? That's when she did she did not say. That's so she did say I'm taking the kids to a friend's house. Yeah. Are you sure she said that? Yes. You're positive? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, now we're back to the blowing off steam yeah. probability, which we like, right? Yeah, that's what I like. Okay. Um, so let's, you know, if we're going to play the DVR, let's rewind five minutes. So we're at the house. You're talking about the house. You're saying this isn't going to work with the kid. We're going to sell this house. Then how do you remember what led to her talking about the kids? As far as like taking them to a friend's house? Yeah, like what, what conversation did you guys have? Well, that's when I rolled out of bed, and that's when she, she pretty much she told me, like, I'm taking the kids to a friend's house today, and I'll be back later. Are you sure she said she'll be back yes. later? On a scale of 1 to 10, how, how positive? That's a 10. A 10, yeah. Okay. So she said, I'm going to take the kids to a friend's house, but I'll be back later. Why? That, I, from what I just told her. That doesn't make sense, though, because oh, no. you'd be at work, why would she have to leave? That's the thing, like, why, I'm not sure why she wanted to go somewhere. Okay. But that's what she wanted. Like maybe she didn't want to be in that house after what we were just talking Fair about. Enough. You just talked about, yeah. It's no longer in mentally, emotionally her house then. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's focus on I'm gonna take the kids to my friend's house. What does that mean? Hopefully it's someone that she trusts. Hopefully it's someone that she knows pretty well and hopefully maybe they have a kid that Bella and Celeste can play with. But you have no idea who that would be? Because we have exhausted all those information all those people. Okay. Is that, does that surprise you? Because I don't know your wife, but maybe that's something that's in her wheelhouse. Does that surprise you that she did, did, did said that and did that? It doesn't surprise me that she went somewhere. Like, she said she uh, might, could have been a play date. Okay. But she was very vague in the fact that she just said she was going to a friend's house. Okay. And didn't say who. Okay. That's why I text her, like, if you can tell me, like, where the kids are. What time did you text her? That was 7... 7.40. Okay. And no work, no work from her, obviously. No, no. Okay. So then we're at the, sh- I'm going to take the kids, I'm going to go to a friend's house. You sure she didn't say I'm going to take them somewhere to a hotel or to mm-hmm. a... Oh, there, no, no. You're no, positive no. she said to uh, a friend's house. Yeah. And not just someone's house, but a friend's house. Yeah, because like, if it, if it was a hotel, I would have definitely asked the question, like, why are you going to a hotel? Yeah. Okay. That, that wouldn't, that would, yeah. Where can we look to find friends that you might not know about? Honestly, Facebook's the only place. Facebook? Because okay. that's the one she frequents. Okay. That's the only place. What's her Facebook account? Or her username? I mean, it's a shenanigans. Just regular shenanigans? Well, they, they have access on her phone. S-H-A-N. A-N-N. A-N-N. And so, they can, I think they can log into the phone, right? I think they're in her phone, right? Oh, yeah. They okay. can just go hit the icon and it's right there. So it's right there. They can do they can they whatever they want. And they can, okay. All right. Yeah, it doesn't take much. It's always logged in. Okay. Um, doesn't she do something online? Doesn't she have an online presence or something? It's with Thrive, the direct sales business. Is that like her job? Yeah. So it's called what? Thrive. Yeah. The company's called the Bell, but the what? Pro- the company's called the Bell. What Bell? Yeah. L E hyphen B E L. L E hyphen B E L. Okay. Yeah, but the the product's called Thrive. Okay. What is it? It's a probiotics, prebiotics, uh, vitamins and minerals. It's okay. Not, it's all plant based stuff. It's it's work works very well. Di- dietary supplementary. Okay. And what does she do for that? She's a promoter. Okay. Sales. Yes. Okay. Is this a? Um, I think I heard of Thrive. Is this like you try to sell it personally to people you know? Okay, so she doesn't have a storefront that she works at. No, no, it's okay. all cloud-based. Okay, home-based. She yeah, can work from home. Oh, I can work anywhere. And so, where would be a list of contacts at Thrive that we could go and start talking to people? Oh, we we've already gave them all to them. Like everybody that she contacts through Thrive, they have them in that. The have that. Yep. In that phone. Mm-hmm. Through what? An app. No, just like all the people that she contacts throughout the day. Okay. Like from Addie and Sam, and, Am- and they're all in there. Addie and Sam, who are they? Addie Maloney, one of her uh, leaders back east. Uh, oh, okay. Sam Paley, another leader. Someone who's supporting her sales. Yeah. yeah. What about people who, because she's in sales, what about customers she tries to reach out to she doesn't even know? How does she do that? 
messenger. You mess with strangers? They, she, either it's her Facebook co like page is, uh, I guess it's public. Okay, so she has friends on friends Facebook yeah. that might someday think that they want Thrive, they can reach her. Mm -hmm. How else does she do it? It's mainly just through Facebook. Through Facebook? Yeah, like if she has any, she might do it on Instagram every once in a while. She'll like sync them both, so that okay. goes to both, but. Facebook and what was it, Instagram? Yeah. Okay, what's her Instagram username? I have no clue. You have no idea? No. Okay. It might just be Shanann Thrives. Shanann with a uh, underscore and Thrives. Okay. So you don't do Thrive? I do, but she kind of runs it. Okay. Do you do it separately from her then? It's, it's a different team, but okay. I'm under her. Okay. It's like, I signed, it's like she signed me up under her. Okay. So whatever I do helps her. Right. Okay. Um, what else are we not thinking of? So let's continue with, I'm going to go to my friend's house. Then what happens? That's when I go downstairs, uh, make my protein shake, get my lunch, everything ready. Because you're not going back to bed at this point? No. Okay. It's, i got to go to work now. And this is somewhere near 5? Five? 5.15. Five okay. And then that's when I go out, get my truck, load everything in it, and it's 5.30. I'm Okay. For about what the neighbors think, so about 5, 26, I'm um, gone. Okay, and she's still at the house then? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, because uh, I mean, she never came back downstairs. And, and explain your house to me. Do you leave through downstairs? I leave, uh, yeah, go downstairs and you leave through the garage. So then this conversation happened upstairs? Yes. In the master bedroom? Yes. Okay. Um, and you're sure she didn't come down? Like, once I was in the garage, I was in the garage, so I didn't see anything after that. Did you see her car in there? Yes. Okay, and you left when her car was in there? Yep. So it's clear she's in there? Mm hmm I'm just trying to determine if there's any other time she could have disappeared. And then, so from 5.30 then, what? That's when I, I went to work. Okay. All right. And then 7.40 is the next time I texted her. And why'd you text her then? I was not hadn't heard from her, and I was just seeing if she knew, like, where, if, or just seeing where she went. Texted Shanann, right? Yep. Shanann? Yep. And asked if she could tell me where she was taking the kids. Oh, okay. So at this point, it's two hours later, and you're thinking, I wonder where she's going. Yeah. Okay. And is that text on your phone? Yes. Okay. Uh, then all the way, what happened between 7.40 and noon? No, I was, work, I was outside working. Okay. Uh, noon, texted Shanann to call me, and that's going to be on your phone, too. Okay. 12.10, doorbell visitor. That's when Nicole was at the door, at the door, and it pinged on my phone. Okay. What's she doing there then? Oh, then ten minutes later, you call Nicole to see what was going on, and she told me she couldn't get a hold of Shanann either, and that her shoes were next. Who shoes? Shanann's shoes. Yeah. Were next to the door, and her car was in the garage, next to the door, inside or outside? Inside. She could, there's like a little, like a little small rectangular window next to the oh. door. Oh. Okay. See right in there. Do you, does that mean anything to you? Does Shanann or her shoes always by the door? Yeah. Okay. So when you come in the house, does she usually come in the front door? Most of the, unless she drives in. Okay. Then she goes into the garage. Okay. So that was just from the previous night when she came in. Oh, okay. So then, let's think about this for a minute. If she comes in, drives in with, what's the, your other car, Lexus? Yep. She drives in the Lexus, comes in. She comes in the garage door that way if she's driving in the garage. Then but since Nicole dropped her off that previous night, she came to the front door. Oh, someone else is driving. The Lexus is already there. The Lexus is already there. Okay, so then that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so you, you see what we're trying to do? We're trying to be like, did she walk out or was she taken out, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then it makes sense that her shoes are still right there. Mm -hmm. But she's obviously not wearing those shoes. Okay. All right, let's keep going. For you. A few more efforts by Nicole to reach her. How do you know? Because that's when I was, she was still at the front door. And oh, I was, I was oh to reach her at the front door. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation yeah. with Nicole? Had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. Two, but, I arrived. I'm sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. More worried than you. Well, so I, I, once once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on at the house, I was like, all right, I gotta go home. But it sounded like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like 
most of like if she doesn't text me, like I understand that. Okay. Like sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. gr- direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. And you had a pretty tough morning with her. Yeah. So she's again decompressing. Yeah. She said. So it's okay that she's not texting you, maybe, but you're gonna come home and check just yeah. in case. Mm-hmm. But Nicole's freaking out. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And, and I'm I'm walking myself through this. You tell me. No, no, no. That's not what happened. No, I mean, like she, she was, like for her not to get back to her friends like that. Like that's not normal because like she'll get like tons of text messages throughout the day from okay. direct sales. All right. Like if she doesn't get back to me, I I just assume that she's busy. Okay. I'm now on my way home to check my family. To get my eyes home, open the garage door. How? I have my uh, uh button. Okay. It's in your truck? Yeah. Okay. And get inside the house. Shannon, Bella, and Celeste. Who are the Bella and Celeste? That's what my kids. Okay. Oh, are not in the house. Oh, okay. Shannon's wedding ring is in our right hand. Her phone is on the couch. Her purse is still here. The medicine for the kids is still here. The car with the car seats are still here. There is no sign of them anywhere. Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone or who she could be with. How did that go? I mean, we're trying to go through from what we could uh, what we could gather, like where she could have gone. Okay. As far as like, cause what we saw in the house it didn't really make, make sense. Okay. So that's where that's where we're just like call it, start look through the phone and just kind of call around. And once we found the phone and Nicole knew what the passcode was, we just kind of loaded up and see what what transpired and obviously there was like 50 something text messages that came that would like pop through. Okay. All right. Because the phone was off. Okay. What do you mean the phone was off? It was off. When you found it, it was off, off? Off. Was the battery dead? No. Why are you making that? I have no clue. Like why was it off and why was it not with her? It's weird, right? Because if you're saying that she does a ton of texting and marketing and sales and calling certain people back. Okay. How would it turn off? You'd have to turn it off. Okay. Because it wasn't dead. It was like 50% or so, I think. Are you sure? Okay. And it was on the couch? Mm-hmm. What do you make of that? Oh. Usually it's not brought by her nightstand. Okay. That's usually where it always is. Nightstand in the bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Anything else about that? No, that that is weird that it was sitting like on the couch cushion like right there. Okay. So can we back up a tiny bit? You come home, no one had been in the house. No. Okay. No one could get in the house, is that right? Yeah, unless you had a garage door. Okay. There. And that's how you got in. So I got in. So at this point you get there, are the police there at this point? Yes. So you, the police, Nicole, that's it. Her son. Her son. What's her son's name? I think it's Nate. And things name's Nick. Nick. And so you and Nicole aren't besties per se. You and Nicole. Oh no, like we're I mean we're friends, but yeah, the, my wife and her are, are okay. really good friends. Okay. And so Nick, you don't spend much time with Nick. No. Okay. Why is Nick there? That he was just with her with his mom. Okay. Is there anything weird about Nicole and Nick? Not that I really think of. Do you think anything about your wife not being around has anything to do with Nicole and Nick? Uh, I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, like, Nicole is one of her good friends. Okay. I don't think they could have done, like, I don't think they could have done anything, like, as far as, like, helping her get out and then being so emotional when they couldn't find her. I don't think like they I don't think they could be capable of that. Do you immediately go through the house? Oh, like I open the garage door and I just I just go into the house. I'm 
I'm, I'm looking. Like, I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just, I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they, they went in the garage. They didn't come in the way I did. All right. So then they, everybody goes in. Okay, and then what? I run upstairs, and I look in the bedrooms. Okay. And because that's where she would be? Mm, that's where I, I would expect. So it's just a standard house, upstairs bedrooms, downstairs living area? Yep. Okay. And there's one office downstairs. Okay. And then, and so then upstairs, then what? I'm going to Bella's room, going to Celeste's room, playroom, master bedroom. I'm looking everywhere, like bathrooms, and nothing. Okay. And then? I found the night, found the wedding ring right there on the nightstand, and then... Right then? Yeah. Okay. Is that yeah. weird? She only takes it off if she colors her hair. Okay. And she would already colored her hair like the week before, so... Okay. I'll that was just like probably a result of our conversation. Oh. I would think. Okay. And then Nick finds her phone on the couch. And why did he find her phone on the couch? What's he looking for there? Ah, no, no, he was he was looking for her. He clues. Was, I clues just okay. looking at the flicking around too and just happened just like to run across it right there on the couch in the next okay. position. So he found it it's not as though you were calling it to find it, he just found it. Yeah. Okay. Then what? Saw the um, so we told the officer that we found the phone. We turned it on. 